so um, I apologize that we haven't been able to put out as many of these episodes as we normally do, uh, like once a week kind of a thing. Um, but uh, we had a little bit of a COVID scare. Uh, there was a possibility that my daughter had gotten the virus at uh, her childcare facility. Uh, and so I've had her home, and we've just been stressed out, uh, but we all got tested and we're all negative. <sighs> um, so that's great. But um, it kind of affected uh, our output here. So I apologize for the delay in um, getting these out to you. I hope you are all doing well, staying safe, and uh, you know, following all the social distancing guidelines. We're wearing masks, we're keeping away from people. Um, and uh, yeah, 2020, man. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy um, this week's episode, which is like really late. Um, but um, it's sangria and it's delicious. Have a good one. There we go. Sangria. <laughs> so we're starting with red wine today, and we're going to add stuff to it and make, you know, taking this to another place. Um, uh, I've had sangria a lot. It's one of my favorite, like... Like, I, generally I go to a restaurant and like they have sangria on the menu. I'm like, oh, they got sangria. I might get that. And 50% of the time, that's what I get. I get sangria or I, or I get something else. Um, but I often get sangria. And I've never made it before. And um, a colleague of mine at work made one recently. And I was like, that's, that sounds delicious. Um, so let me make one. Um, and so I went online trying to figure out what, it, what you could do. And... Um, uh, really, you know, like there's there's not that many rules. Um, I've seen um, uh, mixes that have uh, your wine and then um, like tequila or brandy or whiskey or uh, I've seen a vodka one. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but people have made it. Um, so I'm like basically it's just wine and liquor and fruit and you're making a, 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 a you're stretching out that wine and making a longer drink. Um, and a sweeter, um, especially if you have a dry wine. Um, so I've got a Spanish wine here, a uh, what's this called? Uh, a Monastel, Monastro. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to mix it with some orange juice, some um, Grand Marnier, which is a cognac and a orange liqueur, kind of like married. And then we have some orange juice, fresh fruit, Angostura bitters. This is Jeffrey Morgenthaler's uh, recipe. Uh, I'm going to make his before I decide to start like playing on my own. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so first thing we need is a bottle of red wine. That, that, that looks good. That last little drop, though, is for me. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's on the drier side, so I think I'm glad that I'm using it in this because my wife is not the biggest fan of... Um, dry wines uh, but we're gonna put some simple syrup in there so I'm gonna put um, so a bottle of that 750 milliliters if you are measuring and then we're gonna put two no three quarters of a cup of Grand Marnier if I can figure out how to open it there's a little thing here oh listen to that satisfying yeah that's pretty good uh, so we're gonna take um, three quarters of a cup of this I should probably have put that like out here so I could have been like, yeah, cool close up. But I, I didn't do that. That's going in. Um, you could easily put cognac in here and an orange liqueur. Uh, and if you don't have cognac, brandy will work because cognac and brandy are basically the same thing, but cognac is made in cognac, France. That's like the difference. Um, that's good. Uh, <laughs> and we're gonna put an ounce of our two to one simple syrup in there. So that's um, two parts sugar, one part water. So I made this with two cups of sugar, a cup of water, heated it over the stove until it was all mixed and then poured it in a bottle. So we're gonna put an ounce of this in. Whoa. Oh, it got some on the edge. 
got some on the edge here. We'll, just, we'll, just, we'll make up for it. Okay, that's, that's what we'll do. Oh man, sugar and water on the outside of the... Well, that one's on the inside. Okay, that'll be fine. That'll be... I'm a slob. I'm sorry. A cup of orange juice. I was out of oranges, so this is not the fresh squeezed stuff. I recommend using the fresh squeezed stuff for like everything you do in life uh, when it comes to cocktails and beverages, because it's just better. Um, that's why I don't use like sweet and sour mix, because lime juice and simple syrup is that much better. And then we need a teaspoon of Angostura bitters. And I'm like, it's like a cappy thing. Can I take the cappy thing off? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the cappy thing off. I got it off. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on my floor. That's gonna leave a mark. That's gonna leave a mark. Get that up. You could probably stain something with this stuff. Like it's that potent because it's that concentrated. Okay. <sighs> okay. All right, take two. Uh, we're going to do a teaspoon of Angostura bitters. Pow. There we go. And then I got to put the cappy thing back in. God. Let's get it. I got it. It's stuck in the... Yeah, it just makes drinks better. It just it makes drinks better. And then we're going to stir this up. I don't... I mean, there's no ice in here, so I don't, I'm not chilling it down. I'm just trying to mix it all together. Okay. Um, and then we're going to put our, our, our fresh fruit in here. And I've got um, some apples and some oranges and some peaches. And this is just going to all play together. In here and and I'm gonna drink some right now but ideally you would want to sit this overnight in your uh, in your fridge you know really get off there orange let these marinate there and just add that extra fruity note to your sangria and then you have uh, a pitcher ready for the next day so let's uh, let's have some. We're gonna serve this over some ice. I'm gonna drip some, drain some of this water off. Okay. There's juice and stuff in there. I don't want to dilute it any more than I have. Okay. And then we're just gonna pour some of this in that. Well, maybe I'll take a orange and that apple out. There we go. And. Uh, Jeffrey Morgan Dollar Sangria. Let's see how it is. Okay. <laughs> um, I, this like I I'm not getting the fruitiness obviously from the fruit, but it's still really good as is. Um, and so I can imagine this is only going to be better tomorrow. I will. Um, yeah, that is. Um, that's good sangria. Um, uh, and yeah, and I think um, serving it with um, the fruit, I think, will be uh, make it even better. So I will let you know in the morning. But um, and you make sangria; it's great. Uh, next time you have a party or something like that, uh, if you don't like red wine, use white wine and um, uh, rum. Uh, you know, or uh, some other uh, uh, clear liqueur, uh, because I really think you can um, tailor this to your tastes. This can be, you know, you can make this what you want it to be. I like 
deep, robust, crazy flavors. So Angostura bitters, um, the, uh, the, the, the deep red wine, and uh, that's very much like me. But if that's not you, Google it. Um, there were a lot of sangria recipes out there. Uh, find one that you, you think you're gonna like and try it. And then if there's something about it you don't like, tweak it. Um, but I do recommend, um, uh, and I'll, prob I'll confirm this in the morning, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I recommend it. Um, <laughs> let it sit overnight and then have it the next day because it really lets the fruit get into the drink and the drink get into the fruit. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna finish this and um, watch uh, the first episode of season three of Star Trek Discovery because I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'll see you next week. That was Star Wars, I know. I couldn't come up with a Star Trek theme song right now. I, I'm going to watch it.